Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be a vlog format, but a informative vlog. I am very bored at home after I finish my work. A lot of few people also ask me, do you work, etc. So yeah, I am working full time. It's mostly work from home and sometimes I have to go for meetings, etc. to central London. I am really bored so I make sure that I go out for a little walk or something. So today also I am going to a park nearby my house and I am going to give you a little information here. So there's a really nice park just 4-5 minutes walk from my house and it's sun out. Yesterday it was raining a lot. It really like Mumbai. Mumbai just like the rain was here. So anyway, the good thing here is that people don't judge you even if you're talking to your phone. So <laughs> that's working in my favor. Anyway guys, so today I'm going to be uh, talking about a Masters in Fintech. So to so the people who don't know, I have done Masters in Fintech from University of Exeter uh, in UK. My batch was September 2021 change of location because there was a lot of sound there so this video is going to be a bit specific on MSc in Fintech at University of Exeter but I'm also going to be telling you guys a bit general things about Fintech I'll tell you a lot about Fintech, the entry requirements how's the course like especially in University of Exeter what are the job opportunities after that yeah all of that so let's begin so let's start with what are the entry requirements if you want to do fintech at University of Exeter. So starting off with is the IELTS. Everybody know about IELTS exam. It's an English requirement exam that you have to give to show that you are a proficient in English language. Talking specifically about University of Exeter, uh, it's profile B that you need to be qualified for. There's a dedicated page wherein you can find more details about this. Uh, but giving you a general overview, if you have 70 plus in your 12th standard, you don't have to give IELTS. But in case you don't have it, you have to give IELTS. It's 6.5 overall and 6 band in each uh, section. All the information that I'm giving is true at the moment that is 2023 July 2023 it may change later on or not but uh, it's it's really different for every university so you need to uh, go on to their website and check other requirements for fintech is basically you need to, to have a bachelor's degree which has at least one module which is mathematics intensive for example statistics economics uh, engineering finance degree but, uh, they also accept if you have relevant uh, work experience so that's really good. Uh, another question that many people ask me, do you need to have a tech background to get into fintech? So for University of Exeter, uh, the answer is no. You need not have a tech background. I myself did not have a tech background. I did a BBA in finance, but because I had finance, I'd, I'd, I'd done finance, that's why I qualified for fintech. However, I did some courses related to uh, programming languages, which were really, really helpful. So there are different type of lectures that these people conduct. This can be in form of pure lectures wherein the professor is teaching and you know you are listening to them etc. There are tutorials application based so you uh, as a student you take actively part in some sort of activities like uh, they may teach you how to for example for fintech they may teach you how to uh, deploy a smart contract so you, they do it uh, with you so you they'll give you some time to do it yourself and then you can discuss with the professor so there could be some guests seminars as well uh, when we were doing a fintech there were a lot of ceos coming from uh, different fintech companies there was craig wright who came uh, so it was really really nice in terms of getting uh, exposure to uh, really the the industry experts so talking about assessments, uh, there are different ways of assessments for different modules. Some modules um, did not have a written exam. Most of my modules did not have any written exam. But, but I know for a fact that there can be written exams because few of my friends had some written exams who, who were studying other courses. So there could be written exams. Uh, there could be assignments given. You are given a task. Uh, do maybe some financial modeling. Uh, maybe in a group or individual. It really depends. Essays, report writing. It 
could be anything literally professors may go very creative as well so uh, i remember we had a module called entrepreneurship wherein the the professor gave us an assignment where we had to make a video about any company and we have to you know sort of analyze them in in terms of uh, their entrepreneurship mindset etc our hackathon project we had to uh, pitch a fintech product so it's it's really amazing how how creative how different how engaging these assignments can be let's talk about the main thing that is a very important thing the career path or what sort of uh, jobs what sort of roles could you do after finishing uh, masters in fintech before talking about that let me tell you uh, there are three types of people that really come to do msc in fintech a are the people who have relevant work experience now they have done a bit of fintech already they have maybe in in trading or you know they may have some experience in crypto world or etc right so they have some sort of knowledge already and they have come to uh, have a master degree uh, and uh, you know upskill themselves so they are pretty much clear in terms of what they want to do and they have relevant work experience so it's not very difficult for them to land a job right now second type of people are who have come from a core finance background or a core technology background these people may have experience are doing a career switch sort of thing right third type of people are who had who have no sort of work experience these are fresher people they may come from a finance pure finance background a pure tech background uh, it's very rare that uh, some people would come from a fintech bachelor's background because in india i, I don't believe uh, yet there is any bachelor's in fintech so it's very rare that that anybody would be coming like that. so I fall into that category. so I know that it's a bit difficult for us to land a job in fintech industry because we are pretty new to it. we don't have any work experience. plus we do not have any strong foundations, maybe in tech for me or for some other people, maybe in finance. okay, it could be any any way around. now the reason why I'm saying this is because the freshers we need to work two x harder. because in one year it's it's not very practical to say that you will be able to de- develop all the skills that is required to be a fintech professional so it's it's pretty pretty difficult to do that if you can brilliant but you have to work really really hard uh, to do that uh, now if you haven't come yet to the uk it's really important for you to know that what sort of hard work you need to put in that's the reason i'm i'm telling all of this i'm not talking about what sort of job roles you could do it's really important that you figure this out before coming here before pursuing master that what sort of industry do you want to get in now in fintech also there are different industries that you could get in for example uh, uh, in a fintech company where you can maybe have like a job role which is more towards finance and business strategic and security planning financial analyst all of that engineers it could be a more on the tech tech side like you can get into reg tech roles which are more intensive on tech and coding or whatever Now let's talk about my experience doing fintech in University of Exeter. Now I'm going to give a general and a personal viewpoint to this. First one being I really really enjoyed the hackathon project specifically at at University of Exeter. Other modules were good. Okay, some were little difficult for me, some were a pretty engaging, very uh, good uh, like entrepreneurship very engaging very nice financial uh, financial technology advanced financial technology very interesting modules but the thing that i really enjoyed was the dissertation project which was the hackathon project wherein we were asked to build build a fintech prototype and also pitch it so it was really really amazing because it had a, a bit of tech into it a bit of business side of it a bit of finance side of it so i really pretty much enjoyed that a lot uh, and it was in a group so it was a good teamwork as well second thing is this is a general thing okay now a uh, generally it's really important that you you time manage pretty well because uh, you'll have like intensive courses uh, very um, intensive uh, assignments at the same time you also need to do your part time at the same time you also need to do your house chores because you're in a new country you also want to explore you also want to socialize you want to study so it's 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 a lot of things happening really so it's really important that you understand how to manage the time 
uh, you because you want to enjoy as well you don't want to sit just studying and feeling lonely and depressed in a whole new country so it's really important that you balance both of it another thing that i i uh, noticed uh, studying here is that in a master's degree you really need to do a uh, in-depth research in-depth uh, studying of the subject uh, the professors just you know, they don't touch basics really so it's really important that you know the uh, basics of it at least for people like who don't have tech background at least you know some basics of some computer programming languages for example python um, java javascript css html really important that uh, even excel for that matter you really need to know all of these skills before coming here that brings me to what are my advice for you guys so my top advice for you is develop basic knowledge even if it's about fintech as a whole finance or tech whichever side of it you find difficult whichever side you think you may be a bit weak or you may lag behind develop a basic knowledge skills do some courses right from india now is the time do that that is my first advice second is be very clear in terms of what job roles you want to get into the plan may change uh, later on you may realize that you you don't want to do that but it's really important that you at least have some sort of like some sort of plan some sort of road map in your head before coming here so do do the market research know what sort of job roles you want to get into uh, see what sort of pay range what sort of pay is offered here what are the ongoing salaries you know connect with alumni i've been i've been repeatedly saying this very important that you connect with alumni is doing the same courses connect with me honestly you know i've done fintech if you have really any questions about job opportunities specific market whatever just connect with alumni i'm also doing this one on one sessions recently i've been having a lot of chats with a lot of students and i absolutely enjoy it and everybody else also really enjoyed every time i ask them about the feedback after the call everybody has some really good things to say so uh, i am i'll leave the link in the description in case you want to book a one on one call with me it's a google meet so it's a face on face uh, face time sort of thing like face to face talk so it's really good as well that's it about this video guys i hope you found this video helpful if you did don't forget to like share subscribe to my channel and i will see you in my next video until then bye bye Take care.